there's really no safe like Simply Safe. In last week's video, we started working on the laundry room, which this is a little look at what the before was. It wasn't too bad, however, we are gonna be adding a lot of personality and charm to this space. So I started by pulling out all of the tile, and we are doing a new tile pattern in here with a border on the edge, herringbone in the center, and we laid this all the way down, mortared along the edges, and got it fully ready for today, where we're grouting. Why, hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. It is part two of the laundry room makeover today, which is super exciting. In part one, we actually got all of this floor tiled, which looks freaking unreal. I cannot believe that this is a DIY project. I mean, it's like a DIY project, but it's a little bit of an advanced one. However, totally doable. Something I'll say that actually made it a little bit easier was that we actually did do the border on the edge, which I think adds a little more detail. This one ended up popping up, so we have to just glue that down. It added a bit more detail, but it also allowed us to then lay the center herringbone over the top of it and do our trace lines and it just made the cutting process so much easier if that makes sense so it kind of was like overall just like a really good process and i loved how this floor turned out today we are actually going to be grouting which is exciting the only thing that kind of sucks about grouting is that the grout i like to use is sold at a store that's like an hour and a half from me so i have to go pick that up this morning and figure out oh no we're actually doing the same color as the kitchen we don't need to figure out a color because it's transferring from the kitchen into here now something that i've kind of been doing off camera which i'm going to share with you is actually rasping the edge of our cut tile because on the edges of all of these tiles are actually kind of tumbled and have kind of a tumbled not like perfectly cut edge so as you can see the edges on the tile are kind of rounded and they have this kind of like cobblestoney not perfectly cut and straight look so what we're having to do with all of these cut edges is go in and actually use a dremel tool to just kind of grind down the edges and give them more of an authentic look so they're not perfect and crisp this right here is a tool that i'm using it's a dremel multi-max i've had this for a while and i got this like rasp kind of like grinding stone bit for it at the hardware store. And this is kind of how it works. I find that this tool is really nice for cleaning up your line, but also kind of rounding those edges and just making them look a little more tumbled and kind of soft as if they're not freshly cut on the tile saw. So in order to fill the transition between the kitchen and the laundry room, I actually laid out this herringbone pattern right on top of both sides. And then I used a dowel to indicate the grout line on either side, just to create the cuts that I'm going to be making. Brought them out to the tile saw and cut them. And then when I brought them back inside, this transition, once it's cut out, actually kind of resembles a braid. And I've had this saved on my Pinterest for uh, over a year now since I bought the house. This was one of the original inspo photos I had for the flooring. And I just did it in a different material, this tumbled travertine, which I will link the exact flooring below for you if you are curious. Now, I also use that rasp tool just to get rid of any of the mortar on the inside of that transition and to grind down the edges of those stones. So once that was all done, then I was able to glue these down and I actually just used liquid nails to glue these down because I didn't want to have to go buy another large bag of mortar. So I glued these down with liquid nails and I mean, it's totally fine. It's going to be fine, everyone. Do not worry. And that, my friends, is how I created a braid transition transition in my tile. I have that tile braid transition currently drying down and I want to give it just a couple hours to dry down so I'm actually going to go pick up the grout and a couple of paint samples so that we can test out some paint options in here. So we are going to head out and do that so Let's go. And of course, whenever I head out, I always turn on my Simply Safe home security system. Now, if you do not have a home security system or you felt like you've needed one or you've just kind of been intimidated by the thought of getting one, Simply Safe is genuinely the most simple and easy system to set up. I also just love how they have every single sensor and monitor for everywhere, whether it be a window, a temperature sensor, a video camera, even their new smart alarm indoor camera, which is the only indoor camera that can trigger an alarm and blare a sound 
siren to instantly deter intruders once they're in your house, which is so incredible. So I actually set this up in a matter of 30 minutes in my house, like probably 45 maximum. It's so simple. It's so easy. It connects up to your Wi-Fi and your phone all through an app. It's truly seamless. And especially with the holiday season coming up, just a time where break-ins occur more, people are traveling more often, and also around the holiday times, people know that you're spending and you're getting gifts and such. So just ensuring that your home is safe and secure with Simply Safe is always a great route to go. I've loved mine. I've had it for probably around three and a half years, transferred it from my previous apartment into my home. And with Simply Safe, unlike traditional home security systems, you're never going to be locked into a long term contract or have any hidden fees. And I'm sure you'd love to know the cost. They actually have plans at less than a dollar a day, which is such a great price point. So make sure to take advantage of this incredible offer. You can save 40% on your home security system when you sign up for Fast Protect monitoring and get your first month for free. Just head to simplysafe.com slash lonefox because there really is no safe like Simply Safe. All right, I'm back. Ugh, it's okay. Got the grout that we used in the kitchen, which is the hemp color. I'll link this below for you if you are curious. And then also got some Farron Ball paint swatches and I'm going to test these out. So I got shaded white, schoolhouse white, and shadow white, which are all kind of like off-white variations. This one's the one I'm leaning most towards. It is schoolhouse white, and it's just a nice kind of warm white, kind of creamy color. That looks so great. Then we're gonna try shadow white. It's like a little darker. So I'm gonna use a pencil. This one's schoolhouse. So whenever you go to grout, whenever you mix up a powdery material, whether it's grout or mortar, I always suggest putting the water in first. It makes it so much easier. Don't put the powder in first, just a little tip. Then once you have your grout all mixed up, I'm using the Latacrete grout in the color hemp. I think I already mentioned that. And I mixed it up to a consistency that would flow out of this piping bag. And if you recall back to the kitchen, we actually ended up piping this grout in that entire room. And I just like doing this because it actually eliminates the grout from going in any of the holes or like the little natural like little pits in the actual tile itself i just don't like the grout getting in there so a little tip using the piping bag the camera died and i wanted to continue working on the grout while we had it still so I finished up doing all the border of the grout and it's looking so so good since we kind of over grouted these lines and flooded them now we're going to basically knock off the extra as you could see it kind of turns into almost a mud so once it's to that point which oh i don't know if this actually is once it's to the point, you could start knocking off the extra. After you kind of scrape out the area, if you have any extra, like see this little hole right here, you can just take some of this grout, the extra, and just kind of smush it in and just fill in any of the cracks, any of the areas. So with any of the extra grout that you scrape off, the top you can actually kind of crumble it down and fill it in any of the holes or any areas that you might have missed when you first originally piped it and it's just a really forgiving process and it's also very satisfying I will say so I scraped the entire braid transition and then when it got to actually grouting the center herringbone section we realized that we were going to need to mix up a thinner layer of grout and then use a grout float to just kind of float this over the entire surface of the floor whenever you have butted up tile like this you still need to grout it because you need to fill in all the cracks and crevices so we in the end probably could have just grouted the entire floor like this because we filled up the holes anyways but I think the bag is satisfying and I forgot we were gonna be doing this so yeah <laughs> It is the next day, we finished the grouting and we cleaned off the grout haze this morning and I cannot wait to flip this camera around and share with you how this tile looks. Now the grout is still drying down a little bit. This is a little bit more of a pulled back look when you're kind of going from the kitchen into the laundry room, but I mean, look how stunning this looks like i am just so happy and then the transition the little braid is such a fun little detail and we have a soldier row right after which actually creates an entire border around the entire laundry room the herringbone in the center which Oh, it just looks so good and it connects up with the kitchen so so nicely so you can kind of see from the laundry room this is the view that you have into the kitchen oh my gosh look at that 
this is coming together, you guys. Like, so beautiful. I cannot believe we did this. The washer and dryer are gonna be delivered actually end of day today, which is exciting. But we have to get some drywall up on this hole here because it is a little bit of an eyesore at the moment. So we're gonna re-drywall this, put some over the top of it. So I know you're probably wondering where this original framework came from and where this door got pulled from because I actually have never shared it on the channel. And that's because it's in a makeover coming shortly for Marie's bathroom. And I'm gonna share the full framework process in that video. However, we are just cutting down drywall to essentially fill the backside of what was already done to the opposite side. So I'm cutting down a piece and drywall is not as intimidating as it looks. It basically, you just need to score it with a blade and it snaps wherever you score it. It's not hard and it's also not expensive an entire sheet like this a full sheet was $14 at the hardware store I did not realize that it was so inexpensive I mean I'm sure it adds up if you're doing an entire house but to like patch a hole like this it really wasn't too bad and then I was able to trim off any extra that I need to get off the top and the sides and then I brought in these little tiny pieces that I'm holding in my hand there they're basically like lattice trim pieces and I'm using them essentially as shims just to make sure that the drywall matches the same level of the current wall. So I needed to pop it out a little bit in some areas, so I added that in, then used a little bit of mesh drywall tape and taped the entire seam. And what this does is it just allows your drywall mud to kind of stick to both sides, fill in the cracks, and it gives it more of a stability so it won't actually crack. And this is a dust control one that I use. You just get this at Lowe's, any hardware store, I will link it below for you. It is a joint compound and I put this over and as you can see it kind of already starts eliminating the seam there and it starts to look a little more seamless and if you can imagine with paint over this but we do have to do a little bit of a texture process in the end so I'm going through smoothing this all down and I'm gonna let it dry overnight. and drying but what I'm going to do next is actually remove these upper cabinets now I was considering keeping them in the first video I was like let's keep them it's great storage but after really thinking about it and reading a lot of your comments of people that were like it really diminishes like the coved ceiling and the arch there which I completely agree and so what I kind of want to do now is the new washer and dryer is gonna go here and then of course the countertop over top some sort of small backsplash but I actually want to get cabinets that are only like this tall just only to put like what you need and then maybe like a couple decor elements up there or like a piece of art above. Does that make sense? Like almost like short cabinets. Because also it's not like the easiest to get things down all the way up here. I mean, I'm six foot and like as you can see, once you have a washer and dryer, you kind of have to reach. I'm kind of thinking of creating a shorter area or doing something there, but we are going to be getting rid of these uppers. So this cabinet got stuck for a solid probably 25 minutes. We could not get it out of this spot. It would not budge. It would not move. We had to push it all the way to the back, then bring it all the way forward. And finally... Oh my gosh. That was a challenge. spend a couple hours just doing a little bit of painting in here because I want to start seeing some of the color go up and something I'll say is that when we tried to match the texture of the original plaster of the fireplace in the living room it was so much easier when we had a coat of paint over it to see exactly like what was smooth and what wasn't because when you have all the mixture of like 
the sanding, the tape, the original paint color. So I'm going to be giving some of this room a coat as much as I can with the few hours I have just to start seeing the color in the space with the flooring and maybe it will spark some more inspo. Still searching for a cabinet for right here. I have been searching you guys for so long probably the past two weeks since starting or thinking about the laundry makeover, and it has been such a process. I'll pop up the probably 12 that I've already found here, but none of them are perfect enough. And I found all of these on Facebook Marketplace or OfferUp. Like, those are just my favorite places to shop lately, and so I've been looking there, haven't been able to find anything that's reasonably priced, but also interesting, so I'm still on the hunt. you what color I ended up opting for. I opted for the color Schoolhouse White from Pharaoh and Ball, but I had it made in a Benjamin Moore paint because quite a bit cheaper and it's, yeah, it's just looking so good so far. So I'm painting that on and it is leaning a little yellow. I kind of want to see though once the entire room is painted. Now, as you can see, I don't have this entire area painted yet. This is probably a good 22 feet tall right there. So I painted with what I could with the extension pole over here. And then this wall behind me as well is also painted the schoolhouse white color from Pharaoh and Ball. Now we only have one coat on right now, so I do think it's gonna get a little more intense because because I can even see with one coat where it's pretty patchy. And I'll give you a little look. I'm actually really liking the color. Yesterday, I'll say, when I was putting it on, it was kind of going on a little yellow. But seeing it in the morning after it's fully dried down, it's neutralized so much more. And I want to try a second coat on here because it's really pretty. I'll share with you, like, kind of a couple different angles of it. A big thing for me as well is it also needs to be beautiful from the kitchen, of course, the color. And it's looking really nice so far. As you can see, we don't have the color over there. So that's just kind of a little white at the moment moment but I am liking it the red too don't even bother with that I feel like this creamy color really goes back nicely to like some of these kind of tones in the marble these kind of like yellowy creamy tones if you could see so I feel like it draws it in quite nicely I love these tones that you could see on the camera here so I thought just something a little creamier I also love the scale of the light and then we'll have a hutch or a furniture piece there. But I'm liking the color so far. It's a little creamier, I really like it. Ooh, and also something that happened yesterday, we got the washer and dryer delivered. They are right over here. I'm gonna share them in the next episode, um, just because I have a whole moment for that with the countertop and everything. So all the little things like tiling, baseboards, patching walls, painting, all of that kind of stuff just takes so long. So thank you guys so much for watching part two of the laundry room makeover. And I cannot wait to see this more. I need to paint the window as well over here um, and then figure out the railing situation too. So I need to figure out what to do with that. So if you guys have any ideas for anything, of course, please leave your comments in the comment section below. Bye.